Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I... Thank you. It's hey, lovely yes. to be back. Lovely to be back. Yeah. I'd like to start off by wishing all my Jewish viewers a happy Rosh Hashanah. Mm. Here's... <laughs> here's hoping 5782 turns out better than 5781. <laughs> now, we've been, we've been off for two weeks. And while we were gone, there was continuing plague, uh, war, floods, fires. It's like the end times, or as they're now known, the times. <laughs> so I know everyone is watching tonight, and they have only one question in their mind. What the hell is going on with my upper lip? <laughs> Which brings us to a breaking mustache news flash. I'm sure you all have a lot of questions, like, why? <laughs> and, really? <laughs> and, really, why? <laughs> well, it's kind of a complicated story. I went on vacation, and I didn't shave. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I shaved this part off down here. Now, the reverse Abe Lincoln here has not gone over well with some, or so far, any. <laughs> For instance, my executive producer, Chris, who is almost angry at my face right now, <laughs> he doesn't like change. He's like a child. You can't change anything. Uh, you would like me to shave this off my face, wouldn't you? Yes. And why? Why is that? You think it's gonna lose us viewers if I have something on my upper lip? Undoubtedly. <laughs> <laughs> how many? Give me a round estimate of how many viewers this is gonna cost me tonight because I have... Great. <laughs> I kind of like the way I look with this thing, okay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> At any given moment, I might say, da bears, <laughs> or get me pictures of the Spider Man. <laughs> Where's Peter Parker? He's your buddy, Peter. <laughs> or, or possibly, License and registration, please. <laughs> Do you know why I pulled you over? Get out of the car. Get, get out of the car, please. <laughs> now I'm not here to divide people. Let's settle this controversy right now. By applause, who likes the mustache? <laughs> oh, good. That's, that's not good. Okay, by applause, who thinks I should shave it off in the next commercial break? Okay. Wow. Okay. We will have those votes tabulated, and <laughs> the decision is going to be made by the Supreme Court, by which, of course, I mean my wife, Evie. <laughs> now, I've been focusing on the vacation stash a lot, mostly because I'm avoiding all the dark news out there these days. But our commitment as a show is to talk about whatever the national conversation is. You don't win Peabody's by ducking the big issues which is why I want to get right to the most important story. There's a talking duck in Australia. <laughs> wow. That is huge news for anyone who's never heard of parrots. <laughs> so what does this talking duck say? According to one researcher, it repeats many things that its owner says, including the phrase, you bloody fool. <laughs> it reminds me of the old saying, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's not this duck. <laughs> this one insults you. Let's, let's give the duck a listen. Haunting. Haunting and harsh. Compare that to how ducks insult you in the wild. You're despicable. And it's not just words. This duck has also imitated other noises, like the sound of a pony snorting, a man coughing, and a door slamming. He learned that last sound from the repeated times he overheard the researcher ask a woman, want to see my talking duck? <laughs> While we were away, Hurricane Ida devastated Louisiana, where over a million residents lost electricity. 
and some could be looking at more than three weeks before power is restored. Meanwhile, here in New York, Ida dumped a record 3.15 inches of rain in just one hour in Central Park, topping the previous high of 1.94 inches in an hour set just 11 days earlier during Hurricane Henri. On the upside, the Central Park Zoo is now an aquarium. <laughs> Though it is very tough to get the snorkel on the lion. <laughs> Over at Newark Airport, flights were delayed and the baggage room was flooded. So, pretty good day at Newark Airport. <laughs> now, you know the climate crisis. You know the climate crisis is bad when the once in a century global pandemic is the second biggest story of the day. And in that regard, things are not getting good. U.S. COVID hospitalizations have more than doubled since last Labor Day due to the Delta variant. That's the reason why my entire audience is now masked up like a bunch of surgeons. Yeah, thank you. Safety first. If any of you are actually doctors, uh, if you could stick around after the show, I have a hideous growth I need removed from my upper lip. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll get there. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, thanks to fear-mongering and misinformation, a lot of people still aren't getting vaccinated. In fact, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and state governments have thrown out over 15 million doses of wasted COVID-19 vaccines. But that does mean 15 million COVID-immune dumpster rats. <laughs> but don't worry about the anti-vaxxers being unprotected, because they have found a new drug that also does not protect them. It's called ivermectin, which is a horse dewormer. So you'll probably still get COVID, but on the bright side, you could win the Preakness. <laughs> Proponents say... There you go. Sure. Human beings. Why not? Giddy up. Giddy up. Proponents say the science behind ivermectin is clear. In fact, we've been sent a demonstration of just how it defends your bloodstream from the virus. <laughs> So, ivermectin <laughs> is ineffective against COVID. And when used incorrectly, it can kill you. Worst of all, it tastes yucky. <laughs> Luckily, the internet is loaded with advice on how to make it more palatable, including mixing it with jellies or eating it as a sandwich. Oh. Or throw it on your roast beef. Technically, it is horsey sauce. <laughs> One commenter explained, I take it by hiding it in a banana. Is that what it's going to take to get you accept actual medicine? In that case, can I interest you in a delicious banana? <laughs> this... <laughs> the terrible taste led one Facebook user to ask, can I squeeze the paste into my anus instead of my mouth? <laughs> Last time I checked, this was America. <laughs> you bet you can. In fact... Can they? Can they? They can? Evidently, you can. In fact, it says right on the label, for a horse's ass. <laughs> in lighter news, Roe v. Wade is dead in Texas. Mm. Mm. Abortion can be a challenging subject to talk about, especially on a comedy show. Instead, I'll let this expert give his opinion of the man who signed this law, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. He's what to me. Now, I got a little something. I got a little something. There you go. <laughs> a couple of them. Yeah. However you feel about abortion, and you do, what the Texas legislature did here is crazy. Okay, here's the details. On September 1st, a new law went into effect in Texas that bans abortions as early as six weeks, a period before many women realize that they're pregnant. Now, normally, a broad ban like that would likely get shot down by the precedent of Roe v. Wade, which, while a controversial political flashpoint, has been the settled law of the land for 50 years. So knowing that, Texas Republicans crafted this law to avoid judicial review entirely. In response to this clear end run around our judicial system, the Supreme Court said, I like beer. Because last Wednesday, in a 5-4 decision, the conservative majority of the court said they had serious questions regarding the constitutionality of the Texas law, but wouldn't block it due to complex 
and novel procedural questions. But isn't answering complex and novel procedural questions all we pay you knuckleheads to do? What do you think your job is? Here's the unprecedented procedural shenanigans that supposedly threw off these legal geniuses. Instead of any government agent in Texas being asked to enforce the new law, Texas now deputizes private citizens to bring civil suits against anyone who assists a pregnant person seeking an abortion. And anyone means anyone. As one law professor explained, if the barista at Starbucks overhears you talking about your abortion, and it was performed after six weeks, that barista is authorized to sue the clinic where you obtained the abortion and to sue any other person who helped you. Well, I hope Texas is ready for some dramatic testimony from baristas like, I heard Jimez helped Samantha get an Arbor Day. <laughs> now, famously, we all know you don't mess with Texas, but apparently it's cool to narc on other Texans because the law encourages informants to sue, promising they can recover legal fees as well as $10,000 if they win. They're incentivizing neighbors to turn on each other for cash. Bad news for fans of privacy rights, but great news for The Handmaid's Tale, who just got a late Emmy nomination for Best Documentary. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. But when we come back, John and I are providing vital...